Okay, hello. So my name's Georgie and I'm from Rhino. You may have seen my face occasionally uh, on social media and things. And I'm talking today with Sam Marshall, who is an artist and also uh, a Rhino owner who I have had the pleasure of meeting and going to one of her classes. Uh, and basically, we're going to have a bit of a chat today through what she does and why she does it. And it's all going to be very lighthearted and lovely, I hope. Um, Sam, would you like to maybe introduce yourself and Miss Marple as well? Hello, Miss Marple. <laughs> She is. Um, yeah, my name's Sam. I am a printmaker living in, um, oh goodness, the middle of England. So um, I'm on the borders of Rutland and Northamptonshire. Um, I've got a print studio in my garden. I live in a little cottage. And um, yeah, I've lived here for about five years. Uh, I lived in London beforehand, but I originate from around this area. So yeah, return to my roots, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been up to see your cottage and it's a beautiful location. It really is. It is rather in the middle of nowhere. I did get lost yeah. when I was trying to find it. <laughs> but once I got there, it, it's, a, it's so, so enchanting. It's idyllic, isn't it? it's idyllic. And I've got a beautiful garden, which I have been very grateful for during this time. Um, I've never had so much time to stay put in my garden because normally <laughs> I teach in London, so I'm backwards and forwards all the time. So it's been amazing for me just to kind of really utilize the greenhouse get in the greenhouse grow things plant things out it's been yeah it's difficult time but there's there have been some good things to come from it yeah definitely yeah yeah well that kind of quite nicely will lead me on to my first question for you um because um you are clearly a very big fan of nature and wildlife and animals and all of those lovely things because they feature in a lot of your artwork um, and you obviously love gardening as well and I guess I'm kind of curious about whether you think that those two things go hand in hand um, or what you why it is that those two things you are so attracted to what you mean uh, what, what, what exactly do you mean sorry oh so well so in the so you love gardening yeah. and and you and your artwork features a lot of natural of the natural world yeah okay okay um Sorry, I'll try and be more concise. Yeah, no, so, so you're asking me how they, how they combine in my work? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess, I mean, I grew up in, in very rural, I mean, this is rural, but I, even more rural where I grew up. So I have always been surrounded by nature. And I think living in London for 22 years, I was so hungry for it. So even mm. when I was in London, my work had, you know, featured sort of flat plains of Lincolnshire and, and um, yeah, vegetables and animals and things that I was kind of craving so um, for me they go hand in hand and my work is all about my stories stories of my life stories of my life with Marple so you know and that involves walking running gardening so everything it's 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 kind of what inspires me really yeah you know, and, um, and do you, I mean and and the sort of artwork that you do is um, I mean it's very very practical I mean I know art in general can be very hands-on yeah. um, but yours in particular is quite quite a physical kind of a thing that you do with your artwork exactly. yeah yeah and gardening yeah. is a very that's practical thing yes. as well yeah that's that's very true and um, what I love about lino cutting which is what I specialize in is that physicality it's actually carving um, you know a substance away and I'm a very very energetic person I've got way too much energy so <laughs> no such that, thing as too much <laughs> that whole process of carving of printing of getting up of get sitting down of kind of you know it it does um, it does kind of reflect in, in gardening as well I mean I, I love digging I love getting in there I love getting messy and I love getting messy in my print studio so yeah they go <laughs> They have a very interesting parallel. I've never really thought about it, but yeah, very much so. There is that um, handmade quality. And, and even in my garden, it's nothing's perfect. Although I do keep it quite neat. And I'm the same with my work as well. I am, it, or even though both processes can be quite messy, I am quite neat. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, because you, um, with, I mean, I don't know if you wanted to talk a bit more about lino printing specifically, yeah. um, but I mean, we kind of touched on it already. Why it is that you are particularly drawn to that kind of artwork? Mm. Well, it's, um, I think with lino, there's a, there is a kind of, there's a craft element to it. And there's a kind of, you've got to get your head around what you're carving out. So it's a form of relief printmaking where the uh, ink remains on the surface. So whatever you carve away will remain white. So you have to uh, sort of know what you're doing really before you do it. Um, but there is, um, there's a kind of meditative quality to it as well. I mean, I yeah. noticed during my workshops when people are really concentrating on their design, 
it's always chatty in my workshops but then when people are really concentrating it goes really quiet and that's after lunch when people have had lunch and, and they can't they sort of, you know settling down and it's even with the online workshops which i'm running at the moment the same thing happens um, people kind of get lost in that process it's a really pleasurable thing to do especially when you've got the right tools and you've got the right equipment it's a really lovely feeling of carving yeah. away um, yeah yeah i mean I, I mean there's definitely a mindful quality to um, art in general yeah um, yeah which i yeah. i mean i personally I, I'm, I'm sure you have as well in in the current climate that we're in having yeah. a creative outlet is so important even you know more than it would be normally yeah totally but i think there's a lot of pressure i think people there's been a lot of pressure put upon people to kind of in this time of crisis to kind of create something you know like a write a book or, or mm. take up another hobby and actually some people just haven't got the mental headspace for that which i totally understand you know yeah. i was I'm, i've been lucky in that i've been working on a big series of, of prints um and i just continued that so i didn't have to come up with a new idea i just kept on going so i and i'm really grateful for that um but yeah i mean it's been my solace as has gardening you know both of them I, I've, I've got this routine going where i do an hour or so in the garden in the morning and then I come into the studio and print in the afternoon and then I dip back into the garden but I'm quite strict with my structure I, I sort of um uh you divide my time quite equally because for me gardening is as creative as you know me doing my prints and they're feeding into it so um yeah I'm quite excited about my next uh, project because um I, it's all about my garden and marple and i so all the plants that i'm growing and all the things that i'm seeing are going to feature in this next series so that's yeah oh that's be... exciting yeah yeah is, is that something that you've only just started working on then yeah well sort of i mean i think it's kind of, it's kind of followed through from this i do these stories every day on instagram and um they're about five they're delightful i love i love watching your stories because you're always so happy and you have a lovely <laughs> smile and it's very yeah. infectious and obviously you've got a tiny little dog that I've you know no one can resist yeah and so and, and they've been so popular these stories i mean I, I i as i was saying earlier i've had so many people get in touch and and i just thought actually i'm going to make them into a series of prints so i'm going to oh. make I'm go they're going to feature the greenhouse they're going to feature what I'm growing they're going to they're going to feature it's like over the two month period of, of, the, of the things that the flowers that have come up so it's going to be a yeah I don't know probably a series of six I have a, always have I don't know let's see but I haven't started I've just finished this Japan series so but my my head is already on my next thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah never stopping you seem like you're very um, you're you're very self um, aware and very like confident in who you are. At least that's you know the way you definitely come across to me. And and I was just do you think that um, that art helps you to be that kind of person? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean that's a, that's a really good question. And and I think I can talk about my um, so I did fine art at art school, and I was only um, I went to the Slade Slade School of Fine Art, and I was what 19 after my foundation year, and you are pretty much left by yourself for four years when you do a fine art degree or, or three years. And although I've struggled with it in the past, struggled as I was, I've been angry about the fact that we didn't receive much tutoring or there was hardly any learning. What it did do was was make me very much a very much an independent thinker, and I had to structure my time. I had to be, you know, I, I you, you nobody checked if you didn't come in. <laughs> you know, nobody. It was very much like that. So, so I think it taught me that sort of uh, resilience and ability to work for myself and um, set myself a timetable. And 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 I think that that is one of the really positive things about doing a fine art degree one of the only positive things because I teach on a foundation now and I have I have students who, who who want to do a fine art degree but I'm I'm really hesitant to recommend it um to students who I don't think will be able to handle that level of um isolation really right um, so um but uh but yeah no and I I think I think very much I do think that I think you just have to get on with it you don't have anybody to guide you you don't have a brief really to, you don't have somebody says you know you don't have an essay that you need to hand in it's it's literally just there's a space get on with it mm. but i mean ironically you yourself are a wonderful teacher despite having had yes absolutely. terrible experiences i know. <laughs> I, I i i try to t I, so i've had some really bad teaching in my past really bad and i try to teach in a way that 
my attitude when I first trained to be a teacher was very much like I'm going to do everything that they didn't do. So I'm, I'm very aware of, I'm very aware that I, um, I make it, I, I, I spread my praise. I don't, I, I definitely don't. Um, I make sure that everybody has um, time and I know everybody's names really quickly. And I find that it's really, because I know what it's like to be in a class or to be in a workshop where the tutor doesn't remember your name. And I just know how important that is. So it's very important to me that everybody gets a personal kind of touch. Um, mm. And I care deeply, you know, I love teaching. I love, I love listening to people. I'm very nosy, I'm very curious. And, uh, <laughs> I think uh, I really want people to be able to enjoy this process. And I think that goes back to that whole idea about um, creativity. And I think so many people don't do things because they're frightened of failing or they're frightened of judgment. And I can't yeah. do this. I'm no good at that. And I think that's a real problem with, with, um, with society today and that we, we think we're all going to be judged. And actually, to be honest, nobody really cares. You know, I mean, I, 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 one of my recommendations a couple of weeks ago was an amazing book by Brené Brown called... Um, I was just going to say, have you yes. heard of Brené Brown? Yes! No, sorry, not Brené Brown. Sorry, no, but Brené Brown's amazing. She's oh, okay. amazing. Um, uh, but no, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, she wrote, oh, the book. Okay. she wrote the book Big Magic, and that's all about fear and creativity. And there's a whole chapter on... I mean, we've heard this all before, but, you know, we spend so much time worrying about what we said or what we did or who thought this or maybe some, somebody might have thought that. And actually, we realise that nobody really, nobody really cares that much about you because they're just too bothered about themselves. So, and and, and in a way, that's quite harsh. But I find that quite liberating as well. Yeah, because yeah, because it allows you to to stop yeah. caring what other people it's think. Stop caring. So I always say, you know, in my workshops, look, please be experimental. Please feel free. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to give you a mark at the end of the day. You know, and and that's that's the way i mean I, I don't teach people to make an apple look like an apple i just teach people to to show me what they what an apple looks like to them <laughs> you know and um i think there's an amazing freedom in that um so yeah 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 I absolutely yeah i mean i mean well because i mean because obviously you started saying brenny brown and i jumped right in yes, because yes, Brené brown, but tell me about what what yes i mean she is one actually i'm listening to her funnily enough on my run this morning i was listening to her new podcast have you listened to that the, um... uh, no i mean i've actually i've just been listening to um the power of vulnerability which is um it's um a collection of talks that she did live so it's her speaking to an audience but it's through it's like an audio book that you listen to um but yeah she she talks a lot about and the importance of creativity um but she actually her original um she works in shame she's a social psychologist who deals with shame um but what it's led her to is actually all the ways that people should overcome things like shame um to be more wholehearted people and creativity is a really important part of being wholehearted but it's also a really big trigger for people with shame because of experiences they've had i mean for, up until you're about six everything is artistic and it doesn't matter what anything looks like and then all of a sudden restrictions start being put down on your creativity and um and she specifically said there's a statistic where it was something like 40 percent of people can recall a specific event from their childhood where their own creativity was shamed and they are now they can now you know relate back to it even as an adult and struggle to be creative because of that that resonance so so what you're saying about the importance of praise and teaching and not it doesn't have to look like an apple as long as it's what well, you feel like is true to you but that, that's the fundamental flaw in art teaching today i mean the, the the teachers at school art school are so pressured to achieve grades that and they all have to do these workbooks whereby you know they all have to look a certain way and there is and definitely i think it's around the age of 10 or 11 or 10 or 11 where, whereby students become really aware that they can't draw an apple to look like an apple mm. and you know and the people who can or have that kind of artistic ability in terms of shading they get praised for it and so the, so the people I mean I often get you know what breaks my heart a lot of the time is that I get older students coming to me you know ladies in their sort of you know early 60s 70s and they the first thing they say is I can't draw and I said well who, who's told you you can't draw oh well I've never been able to draw and I just you know you go back and they get back exactly the same as what Brené Brown says is you know probably around around that 
kind of age of six, you know five to five to ten somebody told them that you know Susan's drawing was better than theirs yeah and and it's it's such a shame because you know like we 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 know during this time that creativity has been such an outlet I mean I can't I mean I have been inundated I mean my workshops my online workshops I I, I only release them on Monday and by Monday evening I, I've done six workshops with four people each. most of them were full I and mean, I've got no space left now on any of them wow. people are so hungry to yeah to, to to play around and I think this is what's really exciting you know yeah I think yeah there's a real resurgence I mean you only have to look at people who are baking bread or um you know that you can't get any baking parchment because people are baking bread and and you know, I do this on Tuesdays. I do bake with Sam Day because I love making cakes. So and they I, are delicious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've tried them, yeah. So I, I make a cake and I post the recipe. I've had people all over the world posting me pictures of their cakes that they've made. Oh. So it's 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 lovely, and I think it's that's that's what's important to remember. I mean, creativity isn't just about you know painting a picture or painting a you know it's it, it's any it's everything and anything really. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there are so many ways to be creative. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, art is one of them. Gardening is another one. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be um, a rigid thing. It, it's very much about play and play is important. That's another thing Brené Brown talks about. Um, but yeah, having something in your life that isn't about achieving a goal. It's just about allowing yourself to be open to trying something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you, should, you should read Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic because it really, I mean, she talks about that. So I'm really lucky in that my teaching pays my mortgage. Um, and I am l lucky in that because I don't really want to be in the position whereby I'm asking my work, my print, to pay my mortgage. Mm. That's, way, that's way too much pressure on my, on my prints. And I, I, you know, I mean, uh, during this time, when I suddenly thought, oh my God, my teaching's gonna go, because I, at one point I didn't even know whether I've got any of my teaching left. And um, I suddenly thought, oh my goodness, my work is gonna have to step up. It is gonna have to, you know. Um, and then in a way it has, but not, not, I haven't forced it. I've just been on social media a bit more, talking a bit more and getting out there a bit more and things have really picked up. But I know that'll go back down again. So I think it's, and, and that's, you know, she has this chapter about that, about how, you know, just, enjoy what you do and if you can't you know th th that's not the aim because as soon as that becomes the aim then you're making work for other people and it should be make you should be making your work for yourself and your own enjoyment and then hopefully people can share in that you know so um yeah and i think if you can get your head around that you know like i'll, I'll say when i do my drawing workshops you know well you know why don't you just get yourself a little sketchbook i mean nobody you don't have to show anybody and as soon as i say to them you don't have to show anybody your little sketchbook people are like Right. Okay. <laughs> no, it's it's crazy. I think people still think at the end of the day you're going to hand in a sketchbook and you're going to give, be given a, a you know an A, B, or C. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. No, I think I think it's a wonderful thing to have a space for anyone to be. You know, it's completely without judgment. It's just you do whatever you feel like doing. And if it's if it's um, art, then awesome. If it's writing, then do that. If it's sewing, and cooking, yeah. you know, yeah. if your cooking's awful, you don't have to give it to anyone. Like that's an option. <laughs> exactly. um, no. You know, there's 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 a possibilities all around for for these things. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so I'm gonna come back to one of my questions. So, um, what's what are you planting in your garden this year? What have you got going on in the greenhouse? Oh God, so what have I got? I mean, I've got a lot of lettuce because I love lettuce. I, I eat huge salads every evening, so it's very important that I have a different variety of, of lettuces. Um, I've got runner beans. I've got um, mange too. I've got sweet corn growing. I've got loads and loads of tomatoes. I've got radishes. I've got, oh my goodness, what else have I planted? Uh, squashes, uh, I've got peppers. I mean, I've got everything growing in my garden. <laughs> in my greenhouse at the moment, I'm starting everything off and then I'm, I've been hardening things and planting them outside. I've got leeks growing. Uh, you name it, I've got it out. Because <laughs> when, um, when I came up to visit you, the, yeah. um, it was during storm season. Yes. Um, and yeah, and um, you are slightly exposed in the area you are. Are you finding that the weather is a bit yeah tricky at the moment yeah yeah i mean i i i yeah i mean i i, I mean i don't 
I normally grow quite a bit, but I don't normally grow this much. And I mean, I'm going to have an abundance of things. Yeah, you're going to have to make bundles for other people, I think. I am. I'm going to have to feed the village. Um, <laughs> it's I, a small I'm, village, so you don't have to go far. Village, yeah. I mean, my, part of my problem with growing things is that I'm very generous. So my, so when it says sprinkle the seeds sparingly, I just bung them all in. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting better. I, I was listening to Gardener's World, uh, no, Gardener's Question Time on Radio 4 a couple of weeks ago. And uh, somebody came on and said, when you sprinkle, think about every single seed costing a pound. Oh, okay. So that's been a really good thing for me because, you know, you get a packet of... of, of, of salad seeds and there's there's like a thousand in there so and i'm just like Wah. but and then what happens is that it just gets really messy because there's just t- so many coming up and then you have to thin them out and i have a real problem with thinning them out because you i feel, feel guilty guilty and i think i don't want to get rid of them and look at look at those little roots and, I, and I, so i just so i'm doing better i'm definitely doing better with that um but in terms of everything else i've got i've just replanted my front borders so i spent about 500 pounds on a whole new set of plants really colorful oh, wow. bright cottage plants i've got things like um achilleas i've got alli- alliums i've got peonies i've got uh hollyhocks i've got dahlias dahlias are my favorites so i've just got everything in there so. they're all quite big bold flowers they're big, bold because when i moved here it was very much a cottagey kind of garden with light pinks and light blues which are just not my colors i am not a kind of past much more vibrant person yeah so um you know so finally over the past few years it's got punchy kind of strong colors and yeah i've made it my own and structural things i quite like it to look quite structured as well so um yeah i'm so excited i've actually got the sprinkler system on there out there at the moment because uh, <laughs> i can see you just i know it's been a bit dry so um i know they're my babies so that <laughs> I, i'm supposed to be going to switzerland on a on a solo trip and um i just decided and i, I was given 500 pounds for my birthday and i just thought right what can i spend it on if i'm not going on my trip so i thought i'm just going to buy loads of plants so <laughs> You know, I've, I've basically kept the local garden center in business because I've been buying things and they've been delivering. So, it's been <laughs> yeah, um, well, because I've actually um, from I've, I've been very kind enough to be given one of our new grow beds, our metal raised beds, because um, I might the garden where I, I live. I've got an AstroTurf garden, so uh, it's not there's not a whole lot that I can do in uh, terms of, you know, like <laughs> digging things up um, or planting. But yes, I've got this new raised bed and I did actually buy myself a couple of containers before lockdown happened um, with the intention of trying to grow things. But it's the first time, first year ever I've tried to grow any vegetables. Last year I tried to grow some herbs. um, Holiday came back to a lot of dead seedling as I was very annoyed at my housemate. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, this year I've actually, I've obviously been given a lot more real estate than I was expecting. Yeah, so um, I have just in the last few days, I've harvested my first ever salad leaves and my first radish. And I, was, I felt I had like the biggest childish smile on my face whilst I p- pulled them out and, you know, was washing them and everything. And I was showing everyone like, look, look at the thing. Um, it's such an, it's, you know, I go into the greenhouse every morning and I, I love, I'm lucky looking to see what's coming up. <laughs> No, and I can't tell you how much pleasure that brings me. And and, I mean, you're lucky because you're quite young to discover this, which is wonderful. I mean, I I was 40 when I moved here, and and I knew nothing about gardening. I mean, my dad's a farmer, my dad's a cabbage farmer, so I've grown up in Lincolnshire. But, but I mean, I just wasn't interested. I was not interested. And I'm so grateful that I bought this property because it has just brought this massive extra elements in my life and you, and you're on that journey now you are on that journey because I remember when you came to my workshop you were saying you were really keen to get growing so you know there'll be no stopping you <laughs> <laughs> well yes I mean I mean what you were saying about being too liberal with your sewing yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely I have been I've, I'm gonna have far too many tiny things that I won't yeah. know what to do with but yeah. um yes I, I mean because I'm limited in the space I have anyway there's not a whole lot that I can really do, but I've, I've gone a bit overboard, but I'm hoping I can then give things away to people. So yeah. yeah. And, and even things that I, um, I bought some mint, um, like just some chopped, um, stems of mint from, from the shop down the road, just for, you know, for eating. And they were really quite cons- long things. Yeah. And so I decided to try and propagate them. And now I've got six mint plants growing. 
Um, things like, um, so I did this story about a month or so ago with basil plants. So you, you can buy a, a basil from the supermarket and then just divide it into kind of sections and then plant it up and that, you know, that's a, that they just grow, you know, yeah. I mean, I've got about 20 basil plants from one plant in my, in my greenhouse at the moment, wow. you know, so, and things like parsley, I, I always buy from the supermarket and just divide it into four sections, then just shove it in a pot and keep watering it. Keeps me going all, 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 um, all summer. So, yeah. You know. yeah, there's, there is actually, um, there's so much you can do, even if you don't have, the equipment like yeah. i mean i've i've been um i've been using empty fruit punnets as like a, a homemade propagator so i've just been like sitting them over the tops of, of my basil plants um because they are like a bit more warmth and yeah. yeah so i've just i've just got all this stuff all over the place i think my housemates might be getting a bit frustrated with it <laughs> but i'm using you know i'm, I'm trying not to buy too yeah. much and, yeah. and i haven't really bought much at all um which is which is a really nice feeling that, that you can be getting so much and actually be spending next to nothing yeah no absolutely i mean that's been the good thing about I mean, okay i spent 500 pounds on those plants but you know i've i've spent hardly anything in the past i mean that's you know i mean i know the garden centers are open today but i won't be going anywhere near them for a while because it'll be too busy but yeah um, i think yeah i mean i i just think it's been a really good thing i think people are gonna, we are gonna have to go back i mean i'm hoping like you said earlier the hoping the people who have really got a taste for this now will keep it going um because i think we're gonna need really good things for our mental health after all of this yeah yeah and and, and really i mean i my hope is that this experience because it is almost forcing people to engage in these kind of activities yeah. that they will hopefully find how beneficial it is and use it forever um yeah yeah, yeah there so. are so many <laughs> ways for people to, to help themselves in normal circumstances um and they're just being you know encouraged to discover them in a, in a much more um expedient way i suppose at the moment which is which is one of the good things about yeah, lockdown. and yeah. we're allowed to say that there are some good things and there, are some good things. there are some i mean i i would have never ever have thought about doing online workshops yes how, have, so how, how are you working those what what's the sort of the format so, um, i do them on zoom so I, I only do four people so i mean i could get really greedy because i the demand is there but it's very important to me that i i you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier that I, I give every student an individual attention and I, I have to really figure out what they're carving and I have to get in my head around what they want to achieve. And that takes energy. And if I've got any more than four, then I just, I won't be giving what I want to give. Yeah. So um, if you're doing, if you're doing the carving workshops, are you sort of um, sending people packages of, of the materials or are you asking them to buy them? Yeah, I ask them to buy them. So um, I send them a kit list of what they're going to need to do, quite a detailed kit list. And then they, they, they just have to source it themselves. I mean, everybody's managed so far, which has been brilliant. I mean, I, and the wonderful thing is I've got people all over the world. So, you know, one weekend I had Switzerland, Germany, America, Canada. Wow. Um, Netherlands. Um, I mean, it was just crazy. And this weekend, I mean, the same this weekend. I've got, a la yeah, I've got a lady from Australia doing it. And um, so I would have never have got to teach these fabulous people. And they're so keen, you know, they do one workshop, they want another workshop. <laughs> more workshops so and it's actually really easy because i it's, 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 as long as they tilt their uh, laptop or computer down i can see what they're doing mm. and they can hold it up to the screen and then i can i can spotlight them so i can see exactly what they're doing and um i mean the the, the difficulty is that a lot of them don't have really good tools so yeah. i have to caveat it in saying that you know don't be put off if you don't really enjoy the carving it's only because you've tools you know <laughs> so you know but but to be honest people are people have been lovely they, they're really um they enjoy talking to one another they get to know each other they send follow each other on instagram i try to recreate the atmosphere of what what we have in the class in the workshop so you know i ask a lot of questions and i get to know everybody really well and um it's worked out brilliantly so i do it in three hours so um we do the same thing where we do a test block to get everybody sort of work, you know, sort of gently into it. And then they, they have a design and um, yeah, I mean, I can't believe how well it's gone. So I've, I'm just designed two more. I'm doing the drawing one, the introduction to drawing. I'm not sure how that's going to go. We're going to, we're just going to see. Um, and then a reduction line I cut. So, um, and that's, 
I would never have thought about doing that. And that's given me an extra income because I don't know when I'm going to be able to open my workshops again because mm. I certainly can't socially distance in here. Yeah. I, mean, I, could, I could do a workshop with one person maybe, but... But then you'd that. still be sort of like, you stand over there yeah. and I'll demonstrate over here and then you, and then we'll swap round and then, yeah, yeah I can see exactly. that big awkward. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yeah. how it's going to work. So do you think, at least I've got an option. Yeah. I mean, do you think that um, regardless in the future that you'll carry on doing these online workshops? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I don't yeah. think I've got any, any other option, to be honest, Georgie. I mean, I, I, I do think that people will, I think, I think the more we know about the disease and the more we know about the real figures and the real reality and, and of the actual how contagious it is, et cetera, et cetera, I think people will relax more, I'm hoping. And I think that hopefully this socially distancing thing will be able to sort of lessen. So, you know, I'm hoping in a year I'll be able to run them. But yeah, absolutely, because the demand's there. People people follow me from all over the world and people want to join in. The, they want to see Marple. They, they want to hang out for a bit. So, yeah, definitely. And I love them. For me, I mean, I'm here by myself. I don't see anybody. And for me, it's just been a really lovely way to to, to meet people and to have that kind of contact as well. Yeah, I mean, I haven't yeah. felt lonely once. You know, I yeah. haven't felt all lonely. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's wonderful. And, and just for me personally, I don't think we would have necessarily been prompted to do this. No. If no, it exactly. weren't for the situation we're in and actually this is delightful to do it's much better yeah this is much better isn't it i mean that's yeah. the thing it's kind of it's it's yeah it's, i mean I, I you know some of my older friends have said they've they feel more in touch with people than they ever have you know so we yes there are good things there yeah. are yeah <laughs> well i think that sort of um comes to the end of of the things that i was going to ask you um i mean i don't know if you wanted to very quickly just sort of i know you say that your classes are currently full but if you wanted to just very quickly plug what you've yes, got coming up yes. yeah no absolutely um they are full for the next three weeks i'm only releasing three weeks at a time at the moment so i think i'm full until uh sort of the first week in june or the second week in june so but you know if anybody's interested in doing the workshop then it's all on my website and just get in touch with me and you know come and join in yeah absolutely yeah. So, awesome yeah. well thank you so much sam um I'm, it, it's been so lovely to chat to you and um yeah I, I mean i really hope that you continue to have all the lovely experiences we got on online things and that you can do real ones very very soon hey <laughs> i hope so fantastic thanks georgie all right